Hey guys, this is David Wood, and in this video, I'm going to take the Reaper EQ plugin and configure it to emulate the EQ controls on a mixing board. Here we go. Okay, so we'll go into the Reaper um, FX browser and we'll find Kakos Re EQ. Open it up. I'm going to double click the name here just to. Uh, to separate it out from any tracks or anything like that, just to look at the uh, the plugin itself. Um, now, uh, Reaper's EQ plugin comes uh, with some default settings. It has some already some default uh, uh, filters in here. Each one is reflected in the settings below in these tabs. And uh, you can see there's like a low shelf and the bands and a high shelf here. And there's a whole bunch of presets and everything that I think are quite useful and pretty good from what I understand. But uh, for the purposes of, as purposes of this exercise, we'll just uh, create a series of filters that emulate a mixing board and we'll do it from scratch. So I'll just remove all of these ones by clicking Remove Band. So we've got our first one here and uh, that one is a high pass filter. So we'll set it to high pass and Reaper does some of the work here for me. You can see that the lower frequencies are now blocked off and only the higher ones are passing. According to the mixer, uh, this was set to 75 hertz instead of 100 here, so I'll do that. On the mixer it says you can set 18 decibels per octave, but uh, this control is not available here. And you can set the, the bandwidth, uh, the sort of the width of the, of the curve, but uh, I don't see it doing much of use here. If anything, it boosts, it's boosting some lower frequencies and we can do that uh, with another filter. So I'll just leave that to the default of two. And I think this will probably work nicely for us. And that moves us on to the low shelf filter. So I will add a band here, click this button. This, as I mentioned, this should be a low shelf filter. So here we go, I'll select low shelf. This is to be set to 80 hertz, not much above the, uh, the high pass. So it's right close by, but of course it's a shelf. So it does things a little differently. It boosts, you know, a little curve here and uh, useful for boosting bass or adding warmth to uh, keyboards. If I want to boost, I'll just use the gain control here. I can change the width of the curve using the bandwidth uh, filter here. Uh, but again, we'll just leave that at zero. I think it's fine like that. I'll set this to zero too. Let's move on to low mid-range EQ. Add another band. Here we are. This is a band filter, so we're going to put it in the middle of the frequency range we want it to uh, to affect. Uh, basically, when we apply this filter in real life, we want to sort of try to keep it to a certain range. In this case, uh, according to the mixer, it's uh, between 100 hertz and 2000 hertz. So somewhere down here, over to here, is where we should be using this filter. And we can boost or cut, and that's basically it. Um, best not to boost too much with this sort of thing. You can boost, uh, you know, six de decibels, uh, as uh, Loden had mentioned, or you can cut probably a little more freely if you need to. So we'll set that to zero, leave that uh, somewhere in between 100 and 2000. We'll put it over here a little bit. And we'll move on to the high mid range. This is also a band filter, and this should range from 400 hertz to 800 hertz. So from about here, and uh, when I said 800, I meant 8,000 hertz. So 400 to 8,000, somewhere around here. So we'll just sort of put it in the middle here. We'll leave the gain at zero for now. Same as before, you know, I can change the size of the curve using the bandwidth if I want. And uh, I'll just put this back to zero for now. And uh, same thing also, easy on the boosting cut freely if you need to, uh, you know, boost a maximum of 6 decibels, cut uh, uh, maybe to minus 12. And then finally, the high shelf. This is the last one. It had it over here, but we want it over here somewhere, right? So this is a high shelf. We want it at 12,000, according to uh, the mixer we're working against. So there we go. You can boost cut uh, up 15 decibels up or down but uh, avoid boosting highs too much it's hard on the ears and uh, who knows you might cut 15 and with lower frequencies that don't have highs you, that you want to highlight and so that's it we've sort of got a mixer board set up here now we can enable each of these bands as necessary for uh, for example you probably don't want to be cutting uh, a lead instrument cutting any highs off of it so you'd probably disable this one 
see it's doing nothing here. That's pretty much it. So what we'll do is uh, we'll save this as a preset. And I can actually save this as a default. So the next time I open ReQ, this one will be the first one that opens up. And I think that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for listening. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I know that went a bit long, sorry about that, but uh, it was really hard to get all that information in in under five minutes. Um, I cut out uh, you know, as much as I could, uh, so apologies for that. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I wish I had more time to actually show it applied to music uh, and how to you know, take the different controls and disable um, certain filters for different instruments. But obviously there's only five minutes, so there's only so much I can do and I should probably stop talking now, right? So thanks for watching. Please uh, uh, don't hesitate to give me feedback. Let me know what you liked or what, uh, what you didn't like. And I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye.